Hello, our uh, speaker today for the seminar is uh, Tomáš Masaryk, who is uh, now transitioning between uh, University of Warsaw in Poland and uh, Simon Fraser University, and he maybe starts on Monday or Tuesday next week. And he will be speaking about packing directed circuits quarterly integral. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction and also for the invitation to, to Iowa. So let me introduce to my co-authors. So it's Elena Mutze. She did her postdoc in Warsaw, but now she's doing another postdoc at TU Berlin. Marcin Pilipchuk is from University of Warsaw. Pavel Zorjewski is from Technical University in Warsaw. And Manuel Zorge is now postdoc at University of Warsaw. So at that time, all the group was in, at the University of Warsaw. So let me show you what problem we will we be solving today. Um, so let's start in the 60s with famous result of Erdes and Poshia. And they showed relation between packing of vertex deterrent cycles and feedback vertex. So now we are in classical graphs. And what they showed that if the graph doesn't contain a family of k vertex disjoint cycles, then feedback vertex set is somehow, somehow bounded by k. So it's in or order of k of k. So I should perhaps like vertex disjoint cycles are are easy to to imagine, but what what feedback vertex set? Feedback vertex set is set such that if you remove it from the graph, you end up in a, in a with a forest. So you don't have any cycles. So this is short way of writing it. So this is cycle packing is at most k implies feedback vertex set is at most order k of k. So this is classical result. And also we know that this result is tight. So there are some graphs where you, where that doesn't have k this vertex joint cycles, but where you need to have feedback vertex at some somewhat large, so k of k times some constant. Is it hard to transform? No, uh, basically the, the original paper co contains construction using probabilistic proof. Oh, it's probably so it's yeah. You can you can also like later on, you can think about um, about some expanders mm -hmm. by degree. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so we, we moved a couple of years later, and there was younger who thought, okay, perhaps similar relation exists not only in classical graphs but also in directed setting. So he conjectured that there is some function, not necessarily that nice a scale of k, such that if your graph doesn't contain uh, k vertex disjoint directed cycles, its directed feedback vertex set should be bounded by some function of k. Okay? And then it took quite a long time to turn this conjecture into proof. And it was done by Reed Robertson, Seymour, and Thomas in 96. And they really showed that there is some function. But the problem is that the dependency of, of like this function is really huge. It's, some, it's dependent on some Ramsey numbers and towers of, of it, so it's quite huge. Yeah. The directed feedback vertex, you just try to break all directed cycles. Yes, so exactly. Yeah, good, good point. Yeah. Now in directed, we will move to directed setting now. So everything will be directed. So, yeah, exactly. You don't care if there are undirected cycles. You only care about directed ones. And, yeah, good point, thanks. So now what we did, right? So we really wanted to squeeze down the polynomial, but it comes with a price. So in our case, the price is that now we are forbidding not only like k vertex tangent cycles, but we are forbidding also cycles that doesn't overlap much. 
dot I mean by not overlap much. For each vertex of a graph, I say that it uh, can be in at most four cycles. That I mean by quarter integral. So, like, I now my claim is that I cannot pack k ver not on not vertex disjoint, but like not overlapping much, which means like each vertex has at most sees at most four four set cycles. And if my graph doesn't have k such not much overlapping cycles, then uh, feedback vertex set of such graph is bounded now by a very nice polynomial k to the four. So instead of tower of Ramsey's and so on, I have nice small polynomial. Is there a connection between the two fours in this statement? Uh, between the four and the four. So if you no, change no, uh, no, no. Yeah, if like you change the degree to instead of 4 m, mm. do you get some polynomial depending on? Yeah, like, I, I mean, there is no direct connection between specifically this 4 and this 4, but perhaps if you allow like more overlapping, still constant, then perhaps you can get better polynomial. Mm -hmm. Might be. We have some hints for something, but yeah, like k to the 4 is pretty good already in, in some sense. And do you know the tightness of this? Uh, nothing besides yeah, okay. So yeah, that, that that's good question, and. Like, yeah, let, let's discuss it afterwards. I, 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 we, we found out some, some paper, but every, everything, everything is quite, quite around k log k. So perhaps it's better by log k over log log k or something. So yeah, we, we can discuss it afterwards. I don't really remember it right now. Yeah. So, okay. So how? Let me show you some, some steps. How, how to prove it. But before, I will tell you some relation with directed trivet, uh, which will be our main tool. So what, 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 what about directed trivet? Perhaps some of you know trivet and I directed setting. And it's like roughly speaking, how much our graph is, is similar to, to a tree. So like low trivet means like I'm quite close to tree. And the same is with indirected setting. And the definition is quite complicated if you haven't seen it before. And uh, we will be using it as a black box, so I won't tell you the definition either. So, so don't worry, but we, I will tell you the thing that we will be using later on. But for now, I think that it's quite important to tell that I should relate it first to directed trivet, and then we will move on. To, to the notions that we will be using, then I will define it for you. So there is standard observation for directed graphs that feedback vertex set is bounded by directed trivet time cycle packing. Yeah, it's quite standard observation, and if you combine it with supposed theorem that if G doesn't contain K quarter integral cycles, then the directed trivet is in at most of order k cubed. Then just by combining those two, um, you get you get that the, the result that I promised. So no k quarter integral cycles means feedback vertex is bounded by OK to, to the four. So because you know, like cycle packing is at most k, so this is like k cube times k, it's k to the four. Good. So from from now on, let me a bit use directed trivet instead of instead of feedback vertex set. Okay. So now our aim is to show that no k quarter integral cycles means directed trivet is bounded by k cubed. But I will show you something more general in this direction. So in fact we be able to prove some kind of decomposition theorem, which is a bit nice by itself. And it states that there is some constant such that for some integers a and b, uh, and every 
directed graph G of directed G with at least this polynomial, which is still considered somehow small polynomial. So we have graph with directed G with at least this large. Then what we can, we can decompose this graph into A subgraphs, such that each set subgraph doesn't overlap much. Again, like they can overlap. Each vertex can see at most four such, such subgraph. And also, each set subgraph has large direct derivative, at least B. OK? So this is a picture how, how, how much they can overlap. Now, how I said that this is generalization, so how, how those two relate? So if you, if you imagine that instead of B, you use just two, then, and using the fact that direct graph of directed tree with at least two means there is a cycle directed which is like similar to undirected setting and like this simple fact, but yeah, I haven't told you the definition, so you cannot know. But if you believe me that, then if I, I suppose contradiction, then uh, I have a graph of large directed tree with like something like constant times a to the six, then uh, I decompose it into, into a graphs, each that doesn't overlap much, and each contains a cycle, which is exactly this, with the worst bound. So, I s so so this theorem directly implies the my promised theorem, but with bound k to the six log square k, which is a bit worse, and we can avoid some steps, so we are actually able to show this this result for cycles. But from now on, I will be speaking about this general theorem, which is nice and it gives you just a bit worse polynomial. But still, this is like more powerful. Okay. So before we go, yeah, before we go to the to the proof, let me relate this to another classical result from from 2013 by Czech and Tusoy. And they showed something similar in an undirected setting. So again, there is a and b integers such that for every graph G of three with at least minimum of a b and a a b squared and a cubed b, there are graphs g1 up to g a, and each of them is subgraph of G, and each of them has directed three with at least b. So and this is, this is a, I believe it's really tight, so you cannot do better in general. And uh, of course, they also don't have any overlaps there, so which also, it's also much, strong, much stronger. But this is kind of famous result in, in undirected setting. So yeah, you can see it as an analog. So now let's move to, yeah. So the difference here is really the overlapping and the undirected setting. Besides that, it should be the same. And also, like they have better bounds. Okay, and they have to be somehow disjoint, or you can just take the you find one graph G I of three with B and take copies of that. I don't understand which. So those graphs has to be disjoint in their setting. In our setting, they can overlap, okay. but like only constantly. Uh, I didn't see the picture. So maybe I haven't mentioned it. Okay. So they have. Yeah. Point. Sorry. Yeah. Good point. My fault. Yeah. They have. Vertex disjoint. Yeah. They are. They. They have to be vertex disjoint. So. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Our our graph doesn't overlap much. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are really disjoint. Yeah, I missed it here. So sorry about that. But yeah, good, good point. So now let's move on the tools that we used. So as I promised, I haven't 
told you what's directed to it, but instead I will tell you what are linkage. So what is a linkage? I have two sets, A and B, in my graph G, and I take the linkage is uh, size A pairwise vertex disjoint path in G from vertices in A and two vertices in B. Okay, so you can really think about it as, as this this picture. So this is set A, this is set B, and you have like disjoint copies of path in G such that they start in A and end in B and they are covering all, all A. B can be bigger. B can be bigger. Okay. Also, it's not like not in this definition, but what, we'll, what we will be using is something that we call linkage back, which is exactly the same, but going back. So from, from in this definition, it doesn't have to exist. Right? We, we are granted here just like linkage from A to B, but there can be also linkage from B to A, and we will be using quite a lot, and in our, later on you will see that we have also linkage from B to A, always. So this green is linkage back. You see that it can overlap with linkage from A to B. So, but th those are the the paths from B to A are pairwise disjoint, and paths from A to B are pairwise disjoint as well. Okay. So, so now here comes uh, our. And they have to be on a certain size. Yeah. So, th so they are of size of size of starting set. So here they are of size A. The linkage back is of size B. No, but each path can be of different size. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't care. I'm just, care, I'm just uh, interested in uh, in the connections, mm -hmm. not on the. So now, well, linkedness, that's the term that people relate to, to the directed tree. and this is a subset of vertices, such that for all, all its subsets A and B of the same size, there is linkage. Uh, of order A from A to B in uh, that that are evo that avoids like this <coughs> the whole the whole well linked set so it's like connection outside not using the vertices from W and it's it's really from all the all the subsets of W so it means also that there is always a linkage back if I have a well linked set then yeah I can just switch B and A so so there's also a linkage from B to A. So now let's let's move to to how how the proof is done. So usually directed trivet large directed trivet means large well linked set, and it's easy correspondence. So it's like the, of the same order. So if I have directed trivet of order k, then I have well linked set of order k. But now we need some more structure on this well linked set. So, we are using Kavarabra-Shikroitzer lemma, which, quite, which is quite recent. And here, we are asking not only for a well-linked set, but for a well-structured well-linked set, but we are paying for it like quadratic amount. So, let's, let's go over it. So, we have directed to it at least like quadratic, and then we have set of Alpha disjoint, alpha disjoint path, so those are those black paths. And on each path, there are two sets, A, AI and BI, subsets of those paths. And you, we know that AI appears before BI on that path BI. Both of them are of size beta. And now we know that the union of all those while purple part is well linked. So, in particular, there exists a, a linkage from this B1 to A to, to A1, and also from B2 to A3, and so on. So, we denote those linkages like linkage 1, 1, which connects like B1 to A1, or L1, L2, 3. It's linkage that connects B2 to A3, and so on. But we have, okay, so this is, those are the two linkages, and you see they might, over, they are like, by itself, they are disjoint, and also those are disjoint, but they can overlap with each other. 
But then this lemma gives us that we have like all the linkages from all the pairs of for all those subsets a, a i and b i s and also linkages back. So we are interested in this structure and it's a little much more powerful than just like any any welding set. Can you go back? Yeah. This is the, somebody gives you the sets p one uh, the the passes p one up to p alpha or is it you can shoot? Uh, yeah, somebody gives us. So it's like so for the every alpha, beta, for every p one yeah. up to p alpha, there exists the sets a one a. Yes. Okay. Can yes. you go back? No, back to the yeah. Okay. yeah. So possibly say the yellow path can go through p one. Uh, no, because uh, this set A I B I, the union of it, is well linked, and we knew that uh, well linked means that the subset of size B is connected to subset of size uh, of, of the same size uh, of the well linked set, but not using the vertices in well linked set. So if I return back to the definition, that's uh, there is linkage. Uh, of order size A from A to B yeah, in graph you without use the vertices. yeah you use other vertices you uh, exactly so and here this A one B one A three B two they all are part of well linked set they all are part of W so you cannot use those mm -hmm. vertices question okay so I have the structure all those pairwise all those pairs of linkages. Now, I would I will look how they overlap. So the, I'll define intersection graph for for two linkages. So I have two two linkages L L and K. So this is a linkage. It has like path L one L two up to L L, and also the other other is a linkage. So it's path K one K two up to K K. Like you can think about. L and K being of the same size, I don't really care of any other sizes. So I have tho this, this, those vertices represent path, and those edges represents whether the path overlaps or not. So this is in this in our example, this is L13, this is L32. So those are the linkages, those are path, and now I I will look how they overlap. So if this was my intersection graph of of those two linkages, my like graph of those two linkages, then I know, for example, that uh, path L1 intersects with I chose different with path K1. So there is an edge between K1 and L1 in this intersection graph, and I also know that L1 doesn't intersect with any other path from from P1 to A3 because like yeah, all the intersections are like masked. Yeah. And so on, so L2 intersects more, right? And so on. So I have this like intersection graph. And that's all the ingredients we need. Now we split it into two cases. First case is that all those intersection graphs for all the all those pairs, remember we have like all the pairs of linkages. So now I'm looking only on on forward linkages. So I have k squared pairs of linkages, and if for all indices those graphs are all degenerate, then we can use theorem by a written root. And from 2012... What is degenerate? Yeah, yeah, degenerate means that there is always a vertex of degree d in all the subgraphs. So all, all the induced subgraphs. So. Or smaller. Or smaller, yeah. At most. So and what is D? D, yeah. So D, D is some some polynomial dependent on uh, on the sizes on the A and B. So I had this like. Yeah. So think about D as polynomial in A and B. Those are the original parameters of how how many graphs I would like to have and how large tree that I would like them to have. So yeah, that's. Question. So, yeah, either this is like all of them are degenerate, 
and then I can use some known tools, this region boot, and then like recent lemma of Hatzel, Kamara, Bayashi, and Proitzer. So this sorts out quite quickly. And then there is the other case. And the other case is that there is some intersection graph for two, two, two particular linkages for, um, for selected i, j, i prime, j prime. This graph is not degenerate. So you can think it's, it's, a, it's quite dense. And uh, for that case, we disregard the rest of the graph and we will find the partition into a suffi sufficiently dense subgraph in, inside just those two linkages. So now suppose that those are L and K, two, two linkages, which, are, which intersect a lot. And I will be using them and also those like paths that they are buying code, and also corresponding linkages back. So, and I'm now looking only at this structure and I will do the partition there. So for it, the plan is to show you a glimpse of how we did one, one tool, which we call partitioning lemma, which really chop those, this de dense part into, into ABCs such that they have, like, they are still quite dense, or somewhat dense, and for those pieces we, we used a little, little bit changed lemma from Hatzel, Kavara, Bayashi, and Kreutzer. So, yeah, so, so, so then it, it will be done, we need to tweak it a bit, but so I would like to show you a bit how, how the partitioning is done, it's not, really difficult, but it's somehow like the missing piece that was needed to to deal with this case. Can you just remind us what, uh, what do you want to prove about this study, about the linkages? Yeah, I, I would like to, so I have those two linkages and they intersect a lot. Mm -hmm. And also I have corresponding linkages back. And my goal is to chop it into pieces, like this part of the graph, such that to A, to A pieces, such that each piece has large directed tree in it. Okay. Yeah. okay, so now partitioning lemma. For it, I need a bit more structure over intersection graph. So recall this intersection graph, there was those are paths of linkage L, those are paths of linkage K, and there was an edge if those paths intersected if and only if. And uh, so that was the intersection graph, and I now enhance it a bit more by those green edges, and they correspond, they give you order on on path of, of forward linkages, and they correspond to back linkage. So you can imagine like L1 is path from, from, where, from PI to PJ, and then I have also back linkage, so I have also passed back from, from PJ somewhere, right, to, to PI. And that's path that starts in where L1 ends, and ends where, let's say, L2 starts, and so on. In this way, I can always, like, this is forward linkage, this is back linkage, this is forward linkage, back linkage, and so on. And in this way, I, at some point, might return back, then I don't care, I can use any other vertex in my order, or I will just continue, and so on. So, I, so let's just like, maybe follow me with the intuition. If not, then it will be quickly over, I promise. <laughs> so, so don't worry. So, so, so now really our, our task is to chop it into pieces, that, into pairs of pieces that have large average degree. So imagine that like I have I, I have to preserve this order for some, some reasons to be able to use the the Hatzel Kamara Bershinkreutzer lemma on the pieces. So I have this order, I cannot do anything with it, but I can I can partition it in, into some parts. And I will be doing it by induction. So now imagine that I would like to chop it just somewhere, let's say both parts in the middle somewhere and uh, obtain like sufficiently, de su sufficiently dense 
dense uh, subgraphs. So I I basically need have to have uh, to have one property. So I chop it into those two parts, and either this blue, blue. So those this this subgraph, this like purple and purple, has large average degree, and also this uh, black part and this black part has also large average degree in, in between. So that's one good case. And the other good case is the other way around. So like this black part with this purple part has large average degree. And this purple part with this black part has large average degree. So it's surprising that I am always able to satisfy this condition. So either like both gray or both blue parts has large average degree, and then I can do the, do the induction. Yeah. So interestingly, like the only thing I really, besides some technical things, what I'm really doing is taking the middle on the left side. So I'm counting the degrees on the left side, and when I am in the middle with respect to the size of, of what I have on the left, then I, I chop it there. And on the right side, I do the same. So I'm looking on the degrees, and if I count it enough edges, like enough like half-ish edges, then I can also chop it on the, left si on, the right, on the right side. And then I have this property. So it's a bit surprising that this easy construction gives you actually this property, which is straightforward to use in the induction. OK, plus minus some like small tweaks that you need to do on the borderline. But basically, even. It's like simple idea, but you need to do it technically. Good. So this is our partitioning lemma, and then you use the lemma of Hatzel, Kavra, Beyesh, and Kreutzer, which tells you that if you have large average degree, and then then you have large large tree bit, large directed tree bit. So that's that's the last piece. So to conclude my talk, I'll ask about some, some interesting directions. So first first is, uh, is uh, in direction what was the question at the beginning. So if I allow my graphs to overlap more, still constant, but like not four, but let's say 100. It's called as well congestion in some. So this, like the, the how much the overlap is called, called congestion. So if I, if I allow higher overlaps, do I get better dependency between feedback vertex set and cycle taking? That's one interesting question. Second question is in the direction of lemma of Kabara by Shin Kreutzer that we used at the beginning, uh, where, as I said, we are losing their quadratic factor. So their large directed tree width gives you large uh, the linked set of the same order, but we have we used special, my special, special uh, the linked set, and we are paying by quadratic factor for it. So there is a question: Can we do better in this this lemma? Like we don't know if it's tight or not. Other possibility might be to avoid this structure. So those are like two possible approaches. But this quadratic blow up actually is quite quite significant in, in the proof. Yeah, and third question is kind of meta meta question with respect to partitioning lemma. So it would be really nice to, to see if you can use this this idea in some other proofs as well. So it's like one of the really new proofs in this direction, new tools in this direction. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Questions for the speaker? So um, what happens if you take fix, so you fix the, the order of the cycle, you fix the size of the cycle, uh, say even in the non-directed case, can, is 
So, so would like to forbid really only short cycles or something like that? No, I I say I don't. I I want to to bound the number of covering number and packing numbers of cycles of size five. Strictly, just five. So there, there it's it's trivial to say that it is not more than five times that. But can is there like something more interesting to say or? Non-result that tells you that it is actually five over two. I don't know. Just guessing. Uh, maybe I don't understand the question. So, so for example, in in Tusa, you want to um, to get rid of all three si three size cycles, which are actually clicks, which are actually triangles. So now you want to get rid of all four size cycle or five size cycle or one hundred size cycle, but with a fixed number. Or maybe all cycles of size 100 and less. What can I say besides the trivial th thing, right? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, like this this whole direction of Ardesh Posha is quite famous, and there was plenty of papers in many specific graph classes. And I would bet that it was studied, but mm -hmm. I personally don't know. Questions? Okay. Let's thank you very much again.